Welcome back to another episode of Podcast P presented to you by Prize Picks, a Wave Sports and Entertainment original. And uh, fellas, I didn't think I'll be seeing y'all in person <laughs> for a good little time, but uh, here we are. Season's done and uh, we're back in studio. We're back. It's, it's, you know, we took a little break, got to film from, from the house for a little bit, which was fun, but you know. Thought it was a lot of fun. Funky, you still a Clippers fan? That's what I've been over here contemplating right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, it can't be Lakers. Well, it can't be them either. I, I just Minnesota. think I, I, I'm, I'm thinking this year, saying it live. I think I might be the first person to ever just switch a team this year. Oh, uh, you won't be the first. Well, well, <laughs> well, I mean, like switching the team again. Switch the team. You, you yeah, first yeah. do that. Yeah, I'm gonna switch a team, and, and it depends on who's gonna win the championship this year. <laughs> so going forward, after yeah, they win it, that's what yeah. You're because I don't know, but I, I really want to give y'all another chance. But I don't know what the fuck going on with y'all right now. So you know, I'm, I'm trying to figure it out, and uh, I'm still there with y'all. I'm still there with y'all. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, yeah. It's, it's not fun. You know, it's not fun to be done. At yeah. this stage, uh, yeah. Because I, I did not want to see I, you right now. I haven't quite, like it still hasn't hit me that we're done. You know, you still, you, you just get so used to a, a schedule and repetition. And to just wake up and have nothing, you know, that, that always stings and you never get used to that. So, Do you I'm know what you. I had planned? I'm with you. <laughs> I played a whole you schedule, a man. Huh? You had a parade plan? I had a parade plan. I was flying out family members and everything. Like, <laughs> I, was, I, was, I, was, I was ready, man. I was like, I do not want to go. I was having fun doing the remote uh, because I was like, damn, we all together, like was. away from each other, but I don't get to see y'all. That was I don't, fun. You know, it was just was fun. Podcast on the flow. We was, had it yeah, all there. Yeah, came out the bed. They said, get out, wake up and go right to the laptop and go to work. Now I got to be right, right, right back here early. <sighs> early. <laughs> Yeah. Well, this is home for us. You know, we're back home. This is a home game. Get in on the playoff action and win up to 100 times your money on prize picks as you and the world's best players take the game to a new level during basketball's postseason. You can now win up to 100 times your money on prize pick with as little as four correct picks, y'all. That's all it takes. You can turn $10 into $1,000 with basketball, hockey, and baseball entries today on prize picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. All right, Jackie, you got to give us some locks, okay? We're going to do some more or less projections for Friday's games. Okay. We're going to start off with the Nuggets versus the Timberwolves. We're going to go more or less on Anthony Edwards' 27 and a half points. That's too easy, more. <laughs> okay, more or less, Carl Anthony Towns' seven and a half rebounds. Going more. He balling right now. More or less, Nikola Jokic, eight and a half assists. Less. You're not going to get that. I like yep. it. Now? It's my turn because I want to give you something, Dallas. Okay, more or less projection for the Knicks versus the Pacers series, all okay. right? More or less Jalen Brunson, 35 points. The streak comes to an end, less. More or less Aaron Neesmith, two three-pointers made. I'm going to go less there too, Jackie. More or less Tyrese Hollenburton, eight assists. I'm going to go more for that one. He's going to get eight assists at least. Okay, I'm with you on that one. See how easy that was? I can make my picks and submit my entry in less than 60 seconds on Prize picks. Download the app today and use code PODCASTP for a first deposit match up to $100. I repeat, download the app today and use code PODCASTP for a first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Now back to the show. Well, I guess it might as well just go right in to talking then, huh? <laughs> It'll be <laughs> a depressing I thought I'd never be saying this and thought I wasn't going to say this, but y'all got y'all ass whooped. By the Dallas Mavericks, man, and ha, ah, boy, it was tough. It was tough. And I know you said that y'all could do it without Kawhi, which whew, we don't know where he's at, but we know where he was at. But uh, I want to know P. I want to know P. Game four, y'all came out there balling. Mm -hmm. Where y'all had some life in y'all. Y'all look good. You look good. Mm -hmm. You look good. You look good. But can you tell me? <laughs> what happened in game five and six that they said, I'm going to go out here and challenge these boys a little bit different because in game four, they, that, they, they got us. So game five and six, what do you think they did different, man, to whoop y'all ass the way they did? I don't, I don't think they necessarily did anything different. I think the difference is, is we relied on too much isolation basketball. And when you don't make shots, like you don't have a chance in hell to win. 
And uh, I think we relied on too much isolation, um, which their whole game plan was to load up and force someone else to make plays and force other people to shoot. So they were sending multiple defenders. They were plugging. They were, uh, you know, forcing, uh, kind of like, you know, shutting the lane off by coming over and, and, and fake doubles, sending doubles. Like, I think they were mixing a lot of coverage up um, which was making it hard to catch a rhythm. Um, whereas game four in our win in game one, we played a lot faster. You know, it was a quick pace. That's like how you got to be. The, the 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 best teams right now and the teams that are still playing right now are young. And their youth, they play fast. They're, they're quick pace. They're getting in offense quick. It's a lot tougher to guard that. Right. You can still play isolation through that. But it's tougher to load up when you're in transition, when, you know, uh, the ball is moved from one side to another. Um, I think we just failed to do that. We relied on too much isolation. Like I said, it's tough when you're not making shots to beat a team, um, you know, and, and, and it, we just made it easy for them to, uh, you know, kind of just take over at that point. What do you think you guys should have have done? <laughs> uh, we well, we should have we sh we should have we should have played a lot a lot quicker. We should have tried to get in transition more. We should have after rebounds tried to get out and run the lanes. Um, and we should have played on the second side, forced the ball to reverse a couple times where we could attack with our our ISO players. Um, but I thought we came down and and you know rightfully so it it happens. Right, you try right. to play hero ball. You try to make the big plays. You try to be you know, the score and, and be dominant. Uh, but you fail to realize sometimes you got to take what the defense gives you and it might not be your night, you know, or it might be your night later in the game um, opposed to like trying to will it to be your night. Um, and I think we got in trouble with that. What, what do you mean by the second side? The ball being reversed starts on one side. Okay. Reverse, reverse. But you didn't play enough on the we second side. We didn't play side. enough on the second side. Gotcha. You know, we, we like I said, the toughest thing is is playing against a set defense. And a lot of times I think that's what we were doing, playing against a team that was set and trying to beat, you know, our man. And there's four other defenders just watching, waiting for us to get off the ball and, and get rid of the ball. But, yeah. you know, that we looked, were trying to score. Yeah, it looked like that was the game plan. And I'm sure that's tough because obviously if you've played basketball, you, you can't move as fast as the ball and ball movement is mm -hmm. important. But it just looked like that the game plan was to, you know, get get Luca on a screen, mm -hmm. and you know, it the 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 difficult part is that it worked out great in Game Four. Mm -hmm. Right, that strategy right. worked in that game. Mm -hmm. But I get what you're saying when they're stacking up that help side, and you get a step on them, and everyone's at a corner or an mm -hmm. elbow, mm -hmm. and you're not hitting shots. Oh, that's, yeah. that's, well, that's, that's it's a long game. like the church league. That's, that's. <laughs> well, some of them, I'm going to blame on the refs. I don't care because some games they had your ass in foul trouble too early. Some of it we was We could have won the damn games. And so it ain't all on y'all, P. Yeah. It that, ain't all on y'all. Very small part was yeah. the referees. But yeah. like I said in the last podcast, it, it's not just that series. Yeah. I mean, the, yeah, the I refs mean, are getting a lot of yeah. criticism right now. I, I, <laughs> you couldn't blame it on the officiating because it, it's happening throughout all series. They they gonna make mistakes and but it's too much acting still. It's a lot that, of acting. That's killing the game. It's, 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 I thought, it's, that's killing the game. I thought I was People an actor, trying to shit. sell yeah. calls. It is getting a little a little carried away. It's too much. It is getting it, a little carried away. I saw a clip of a little kid. He had to have been nine, I saw that. nine ten years old. And he's, and he's like defending this. the inbound. And, yeah, I saw <laughs> and the kid, I felt bad the kid for the kid. Like, Wait, what happened? I didn't see it. Basically, like, you know, like. They probably was like seven, eight years old, too. It's, it starts <laughs> off, you know, now everyone wants to go out. The first thing they do is shoot three-pointers from half court because right, of right, Steph right. Curry. Now these little kids on these AAU team, 10 years old, He's denying the ball from being passed in bounce, and the kid is just sitting there like this. Yeah. And the guy, hey, it was a great flop. It was though. a great <laughs> flop. It was a great he flop. He practiced it, but the, the kid kids literally are like, now. The kid literally <laughs> flopped and flew down. <laughs> and uh, the kid that was trying to get the ball was just looking like, <laughs> what? <Yeah. laughs> I want to know who was the first flopper flopper. Like, who really started Divac. this flopping shit? Vladi Divac. Vladi? He, he was known for flopping. That's yep. the, the furthest one I could think that of. Now I'm gonna look up. I'm gonna have to look it up. So Vladi Divac. I mean, Divac, it's it's it's, it, it's a I lot. think it originates from the Euro League, from European sporting. I think we 
like you watch the soccer yeah. players and they sell calls and they, you know, get hit and mm. yeah, act like they shot. <laughs> I think it originates from that and it and it was brought over into our sport where people are trying to sell that call. <laughs> so yeah, that that, def, that that would make sense. Yeah. I'm tired of seeing it. I again, I I'm glad that the, the refs they they got to be feeling some pressure, man. The New York game that just played that that was horrible. The Denver game, the oh, Minnesota man. Denver game, the start of that game was crazy. That yeah, play, it was a lot of contact on plays. The pick and uh, foul at the end. Yeah, of the yeah, game yeah. They now. called an oh offensive foul God. on. I did think I I thought it was a flop, uh, Divincenzo flop. Beyond, but I think it was the right call because Miles was was technically Still moving. Yeah. So the call, like, you have to give the player a step, and I think Miles came in and and was set but it was like right up on DiVincenzo not right, allowing right. him to get a step to like make a play and then he did the extra you know he sold it <laughs> with the fall yeah I hate I to say it, it but you know whose fault that was who Halliburton yeah rushed it yeah. went a little too soon you gotta wait for that screen yeah. that doesn't happen if you look at yeah, you basketball one on one wait you know Halliburton was balling. Don't, don't act so. like you're impressed. Though. Like don't, <laughs> don't, don't do that. I didn't know what the second side. I just the wanted to make sure that the, yeah. that was the terminology. But <laughs> they called it on uh, Joel, I think, in that game. But yeah. th now I feel like all the analysts and stuff are. Did you like? I thought it was great. Did you like? Because I watching it real time, the Mike Malone and uh, the official uh, when they got into it at the end. You talking uh, about you know, the when he didn't call that? You talking about what, is that? You talking about uh, what game was that? Mike Malone, the he Nuggets coach. He came out coach. on the floor. The he came and out on the floor. Yelling he didn't get at the that ref. foul on Anthony Edwards. That's what he came and yelled at him. Like, yeah. like why you didn't call I like it? There was no technical no foul, foul call. Nothing. It's got to be consistent. Like that? It's got if it's consistent. I think he just because there was a lot of emotion there. I respect the the Mark Davis understanding heat of the moment, big big game, like not losing his cool and calling that technical foul. Yeah. Emotions like emotions are going to be high. It's an emotional sport. I don't understand why technicals are being thrown around so much, especially in the playoffs. It's an emotional sport. Like sometimes you you can't control it because you're so invested in it. Like and at the end of the day, they, like <laughs> it says, like what you, what you you can talk to a damn ref. It ain't like he said he he was yelling mad. Of yeah. course, yeah, but yeah. he was like, what the fucking foul? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You can but it's do like, that. It's what, like it's what you signed up for. Like right. why are you why are you going Give me a tech. This you signed up to be an official. Like right, you, you right. gotta get some of this heat. Like, yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> disagree with you though because you're wrong. He stormed out on the court and got in the ref's face. That's a technical foul. I thought that was a lot. I thought that was a lot. That's if what I'm saying. If he's in his coaching box and he's giving him a handful, that's. But he looked at it like if he was about to get hurt. He's about to fight him. There was a one technical foul that was called on Anthony Edwards for just turning around and looking at the guy. But then there was a, they were comparing in that same game, there was another technical, I think, that it's just not consistent. Yeah. So, but I, I do think that's a technical foul. You can't, you can't. 100%, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that was. But I do respect like. Mark Davis having the composure. Correct, to like no one. Keep the game going. I think for the fans, like again, again moving on to the Jamal Murray situation, what happens with him? You what know? happens to Patrick Beverly? Well, they find him 100K. <laughs> I saw that they find him Oh, they saw they did find him. Okay, does he get, so. But do, I don't know about a suspension. Like, yeah. I, I, I hope not. Yeah. Because that, you know. I'm with you We want to see the best basketball. Well, they, yeah. But you players can't, being. Can't they going to put that ankle like brace. This, yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah, yeah, that, that was a crazy yeah. move. God but forbid you, he, Carl, steps on that. Yeah, and somebody could have slipped. Yeah. Like, I honestly think, because, you know, inside the heat pad is, it's the heat pad and then there's a, a it's like an overlaying part that the heat pad goes yep, in. Yep, yep. And I think he waved it because the, the heat pad thing's out. open. Yeah. And, flew, no, I, and, I, and I think open. it flew out accidentally. Uh, and it hit the floor. I agree. I don't think he purposely was trying to throw mm. the heat pad. But the first but that, one he was. He was trying to hit his ass at first. You think he was trying to hit him? <laughs> Would have wrapped right around yep. Carl's ankle. He would have been <laughs> good him. anyways. God, he did. He, man, he was like, I, I, did I get him or not? The ref just looked back. Who threw that? Yeah. And did it. Boom. Yeah. I don't know. His I think. Is high. Now that, fine and all that, but I don't think he, he should get suspended. For yeah. sure. But again, if if Malone doesn't get the technical, Anthony Edwards should Shouldn't not get got, a technical exactly. for that. Keep it exactly. consistent. Keep it consistent. At exactly. least now you can 
That's you fair. know, just like in any just be fair, you got to I would assume as an NBA player that, you know, what those refs and I think they even tell you guys, like if they're trying to get rid of hand checking or whatever, the refs usually say, hey, this is how we're going to be calling tonight's game. And they kind of give you a, a heads up. Is that not true? And if that's not true, you at least know the referees that are refing you. Yeah. You know what they typically call, what they let go, what they don't let go. And the consistency, at least you got to have that going into the game. Yeah. Like if you're going to call that's this, the thing, don't call though. That. There is no consistency when it comes to the officiating. Zero. It's zero consistency. Yeah. Like one thing might be this next game. Like you could be, you could be going on, on like what they told you last game. Like, oh, okay, let me not do that. Right. And then you go into the next game they and now these, this crew is calling that. And it's like, damn, y'all just, the last crew just said, I'm like, I could do that or they they were calling that now y'all not calling that like yeah so it, it's 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 wildly inconsistent yeah. is they ever gonna fix the problem <sighs> Dude, I no could go on it's, never gonna be like there's gotta be something it gotta be a rep it gotta be something i don't that, know what i don't know to fix it it seems yeah. worse than it's ever been i know that refereeing has always been a We've always had refs. If they yeah. make a they, call, it got to be somebody else to come over. They call now to judge it. Or they something. can't do that I mean, though because it, it takes like, too long. It's not going to change. It's taking y'all out, y'all game. It's not going to change. It's too much. So, P, I know you talked about what the team could have done differently, and I know hindsight is always twenty twenty. But what do you feel you could have done individually different in that series against the Mavs? The one thing I should have done better is just been a little bit more efficient, and like I said, taking it for what it was. Um, their plan was to get the ball out of my hands and show extra bodies, which, you know, in game three, I thought I made the adjustment going into game four to be more aggressive to score. Then as I got going and started scoring game five, the adjustment was to try to wear me down, show extra bodies, force the ball out of my hands. Um, they were packing the paint. Um, and I should have made the adjustment of like, or I should have saw that earlier and been like, okay, well, this is all right. Well, let me just bait them, you know, and, and, and free up shots for teammates. And, uh, when you have a rough game, you don't play well, your natural follow up to that is be more aggressive, mm -hmm. which, uh, I was playing right into their hands at that point. You yeah. know what I mean? They already was going to be to get the ball out of his hands, do this, do that. So I'm like, game six, like, I got to be more aggressive to score, which wasn't the answer. So, I mean, hindsight, you think about those things. Um, but, you know, it's it's a game. It's the reason why it's a game. You play the game to win, and sometimes you're on the opposite end of it. <sighs> Man, that hurts. <laughs> Great. All right, so now we're in the off season now, and I want you to walk us through – uh, your off-season approach. You got a few few months here where you get to rest, you get to relax. How long till you pick up a basketball again? When are you going to start working out again? What does your off-season look like this year? I think initially is uh, kind of taking time off, let my body recover, let my body heal. You know, it's it's a, it's mentally draining and taxing to go through a season. So you kind of just want to get away from working out, from basketball, from, you know, just – uh, 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 repetitive schedule, spend family time, you know, do little stuff, take the kids to school, wake up with them, have breakfast, like all the little stuff you enjoy again um, with the, you know, not having nothing to do anymore. Um, and then I'll get into, you know, kind of reflecting on how the season went, things to work on. Um, you know, I'll go over that with Aaron, my agent. Um, and then kind of put a plan together of the best people that I could hire to work on the deficiencies of the season. And that's kind of how I process every, every summer. Um, so I'll literally scout like, all right, who's the best ball handling person that I can find? Or, you know, I want to be a better shooter. Like who's one of the best shooting coaches that I can work with this summer? Um, or just get a basketball, like I want more basketball rep. Like who's the best person I can get put in game simulated, uh, you know, workouts. So it's always just breaking down like, you know, what I, I want to try to get better at or get more comfortable with going into a new season. Well, if you need a defensive coach, um, I'm always here for you, bud. 
I still want to be a defensive coach. A lot coach. of, a lot of, do you? Yeah, I think I could. I think if, I could help if people. If you could, if you could get signed right now to an NBA job, you think that's pressure or it's like oh, I got this? I know defense. I think that I could. From what I've watched, I think the defensive side of the ball gets overlooked a lot, and at that level, I think that you guys are such great athletes that the principles of defense can get lost because you guys can make up for it yeah. for how gifted you guys are athletically. I think if more defensive side of the ball was taught that you guys would be even better defenders. Absolutely. Absolutely. Man. So I, I, I think I could. We know you the man and shit. <laughs> we know that. But I got to know who is your favorite player to watch? Like when you do like want to learn something like right now that's playing. Like you say, Lamb, this motherfucker really be balling. Like who do you watch that one player? I don't watch any current players to watch. Like I don't watch current players now to be like working on my game. Mm. I watch a ton of Kobe shit. I watch a ton of T-Mac shit. And honestly, that's it. Like that's it. I'll, just mentality for me is just the mentality. Like I watch the mentality of what Kobe would do in situations. Right, right. You know, and then watch the footwork, watch the, uh, you know, just his attack angles. Like, he might do one dribble and then, you know, go left or raise up over a smaller defender or he spots where the open space on the floor is. Like, I'll watch little stuff like that. What's the mentality on this possession to get a free or open look? So it's it's more so like, you know, I, I look for those kind of those, things. Okay. Yeah. Like, I know things I struggle with on the year. Um, so it's always easy for those things to pop up first thing on my mind, like well, areas of improvement. I used to watch tape and watch film and watch games and highlights. But then I feel like I've gotten so aware of throughout the year of like, damn, I got to work on this. I got to get better at this. Or like, this is a flaw right now. Like, that I, I've, I've kind of just like took mental notes. And just being able to address it, you know, as soon as the season's over. Um, so not necessarily just watching tape. I think it's just more so just being aware as the season goes. There are so many streaming apps, it can be hard to even find what you want to watch. But there's a way to outsmart the system. Prime Video. It has all my live sports and docs in one app, like Giannis, The Marvelous Journey, and the National Women's Soccer League, both included with Prime. Plus, you can buy Premier Boxing or stream the NHL and NBA playoffs on Max with the Bleacher Report sports add-on or add Paramount Plus for the Masters on CBS. Prime Video. It's all of your favorite sports in one place. Restrictions apply. Prime membership is required for add-on subscriptions. See Amazon.com backslash Prime Video for details. This episode is sponsored by Coinbase. Coinbase is the best and easiest place to get started with crypto. Coinbase is the most trusted, only publicly traded crypto exchange. And honestly, the best way to get started learning about crypto is simply to try it. That's all I did. It's easy to buy a little crypto and get started investing with as little as $20. It's also a great place to learn about crypto. Get the latest crypto news directly. You might have heard of Bitcoin, which was the world's first cryptocurrency and still the most popular. But Coinbase has over 200 digital assets on its platform you can trade, including Ethereum, Solana, XRP, Dogecoin, and many more. Fans of this podcast get $20 in Bitcoin when you sign up and make a trade today using promo code PODCASTP at Coinbase.com slash partner slash PODCASTP Coinbase. Crypto moves money forward. Let's keep it Western confidence, man. I'm going to ask you about, because this should be y'all moving on playing OKC, but it, it so happened to be Dallas staking ass. But uh, <laughs> anyways, we're recording this before game one. So, P, I want to ask you at Dallas, who y'all think going to take this series, man? Who y'all think? Who you got? I got um, Oklahoma. Okay, so okay, you, see? Got, you got Oklahoma. You think I, they got the advantage? I think they have the advantage. I What's think, their advantage? I think that they have a deeper team. Mm -hmm. I think that they play together better. Mm -hmm. And their chemistry is great. You watch those guys after an interview. They, they're the best to yeah. watch after yeah, 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 an yeah. interview. When, yeah. when Shay was like, everything I do in my life is consistent or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> now uh, I got this thing where they bark. Yeah, <laughs> they get the reporter to come bark. But I think all that stuff... You know, matters. It Those matters. guys are 100%. a good team. They're together. 
uh, young, fresh legs. They have home court advantage. Oklahoma's going to be going crazy. I think it's going to be a good series, mm -hmm. but I think Oklahoma's going to going to take that. What about you, P? Yeah, it's it's tough because I do think I actually think Dallas has the advantage. I think Oklahoma has the upside. Like Dallas, the advantage of because you have two stars that have been two superstars that have been in tough you know, playoff environments, tough playoff games. They know how to rise to the occasion. They know how to score. Like, I think, you know, for the Oklahoma City team, a lot of their guys, this is like their first playoff showing that they, you know, now, you know, second round is mm -hmm. more media, it's more coverage, it's bigger games, lights are brighter. But I do think the upside of it is like, they're still young, they're still figuring this all out, and yet they're still winning being a young team, but they, they do have the depth. They, I, I think for how young they are, they have one of the, the deepest benches in the league. Um, so, I mean, I, I like, I mean, honestly, it's, it's a tough, it's a toss up because I like both teams in this situation. Yeah. But I don't know, man. I, I think it's, it's uh, like you talk about these young guys squaring off against each other. This is a pecking of Shea versus Luca. Like you get that debate of the next young wave. Anthony Edwards is in that conversation as well. This is the debate of like who's the next young star, and and I think we we're about to witness a really good matchup. Who do you got, Jackie? Well, that's what I think, <laughs> Coach Jack. I, I I think this, and like he, like like P and both of y'all say, you say okay, C. P say you know. These, these boys is young. They very young. They got young legs. They good. But when you have a Dallas team that's coming off of beating the Clippers, you know, a team that should be going on to the next uh, 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 series, they have a different thing because not to say who who didn't play, who didn't do this, they beat the Clippers. They moving on to some young dudes who, yes, they energetic, they this and that. But if you beat, it always goes like this. You either come off that team that you just beat that, that, that you shouldn't have, uh, 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 one, you either go next and play OKC, you lose after beating a team that should have that you shouldn't have beat. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You either lose or you go in there like you know what people saying we're older. We this Luca don't have this. He this is his opportunity. This is his chance. You go over there and you take everything out on them young dudes. You know what I'm saying? If you can, you know what I'm saying because them young dudes is energetic. Don't get me wrong. They have a nice bench, but I look at Dallas. They have a nice. Little young dudes on their squad, that center they have, he's, mm -hmm. he's he's amazing to me. He had about 13 dunks one game, mm -hmm. and it was just off and on. And Both I, of them. You know Both what I'm saying? And when you got somebody like a Kyrie Irving on your team and a, a Luka distributing the ball the way that they do, and you got to, like how they did the, the Clippers, you they don't know if you got to double team them, triple team them. It's, it's going to be tricky, and I'm going to have to just say, just because the, of the me watching them play the the Clippers, I see them on a different mission, and I'm I'm gonna pick Dallas. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna Man. pick Dallas. Yeah, I think thinking about it, I when you because Oklahoma plays fast, very. I don't know if Dallas can keep up or sustain that level of of pace, and they're gonna be a lot. They have a lot of defenders in in Oklahoma as well that that that's gonna th be thrown at Kai and Luca. Yeah. So I, I I do think it's gonna be a challenging. Yeah. Serious, be a because they, should, they shouldn't have beat the Clippers and that's how I always look at it they shouldn't have beat them and they did so they're either going to lose the, this next series or they're going to win because of some old bullshit that's just how this it goes man <laughs> I'm here for it yeah, I don't, I'm here for I, it yeah, my, be a good my, series my, my only my only counter <laughs> argument just my last kid. thing before I'm just saying there's no choice but I'm just saying I hate I always go with they going they going right now the mission that they own and just because of how they that Kyrie is just special to me right now yeah. after watching him it's like just watching him more in the playoff series right now he is some just he must special see TV to for watch. sure Jackie will you be will you watch the rest of the NBA playoffs and if you were to pick a team who who are you going to be cheering for who's your favorite right now i like that boy man AE i ain't going to lie AE's tough AE's i like a i like AE i i, I just like his whole demeanor right now on the court. It's yeah. like he don't know he don't care about nothing else but winning. He yeah. don't even care if it's a championship to get. He just know I gotta win to get a championship. Yeah. That's all he know and that's all I see. And to me, he doing anything and everything to do that with the team. I seen the dude one game literally twist both ankles. 
and stayed <laughs> literally twisted both ankles. His yeah. left ankle and switched his shoes because he thought that was a problem and came and, and twisted his ankle again in the other new shoes and still stayed in the game. And I said, damn, this little boy is really up to something. He won it. He won it. He won so it. the Timber was going to win? I'm going to say, yeah, man. If they keep playing the way they playing now and no injuries, they can take it all. I would double down on that, honestly. That's your pick? Like you... No Porter. Okay. Go. <laughs> good, uh, good, good, good. Nah, yeah, uh, if I had to bet, yeah, for sure. Minnesota is, Cat alone, like, has been dominating. Yeah. And then you add Anthony Edwards, who's been a star on both ends. I think as much offensively that he's been showcasing his abilities, I think defensively, if you watch the games, He's been a star on defense as well. So like, it, it, and then you got Rudy Gobert, who is the four-time defensive player of the year now. Four time. It that, it's just a well complete put together team. And they got there. a coach on the court with him who has an injury. Michael Conley. Oh well, there you go. Come on. Yeah. Did you see they the coach get hit? Yeah, I saw <laughs> the that. The coach got I saw hit. That. Man, he was, man, they got a I coach on the tough court. Way to go out. That is. Ended the game too. Logo. But I will sacrifice my leg for a championship. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bars. <laughs> bars. I would. Bars. I would sacrifice a knee for a championship for sure. Yeah, but I think they're gonna sweep them boys though. Yeah, it's the looking like looking. it. You think I mean, so? Yeah, they're gonna. I, they I don't gonna think they're gonna sweep them. I think Denver's I too experienced, too good. They're gonna get. It's hard one. to win. They, they didn't. One of the toughest places to play is in Denver, and they lost both games at home. Minnesota's up there as one of the toughest places to play as well. And uh, those boys, like they lost two <laughs> Timberwolves, they got a different like. It's a different yeah, their level. Their swag confidence. is crazy. And they right got their ass whooped that last game. They did. The whole whooped. team, like it's one thing, like if you watch teams and you watch like how they just connect and, and interact with each other. Yeah, it's like oh yeah, yeah. They they, they get it. They were killing uh, Jamal Murray on defense. Yeah, that was fun to watch. I like the defense. They were. Yeah, they got a good defense team. Him. They got a uh, between. Rudy, Cat can is underrated. He can defend the rim. Like I said, Anthony Edwards is like showing that he can be a, a first team all defense candidate. And they boys Daniels over there. Uh oh, yeah. Oh, what, yeah, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's the other one? Daniels. Nick Daniels, and then there's another guy that's just playing great Alexander. Yep. Alexander. Yeah. All in man. Kyle Anderson is a defender. Yep. Nas Reed did an amazing job on uh Jokic, um, it, they, they're locking up. If they, like, if they keep playing the way they play, it was impressive. I think that was that was that was an impressive win game too. Keep whooping that. P, you guys got to play the Wolves a couple times this season. Walk us through what makes that matchup so difficult and different from any other team in the league. Yeah, I mean it, they're tough because they're a big team. You look at their front court. You have Rudy Gobert, Carl Anthony Towns, McDaniel's. Cat and Rudy are both seven footers. So like, you know, Cat has shown that he can guard um and make a difference on the defensive end. And he's he's really been been great this postseason defensively. Um, but it's tough. You beat one player, you beat, you know, uh McDaniels, you beat Anthony Edwards, you're going against the defensive player of the year at the rim. And those two guards are really good on ball defenders. So it's it's one thing to beat those guys. It's another thing to now face the defensive player of the year at the basket. Um, and so you're worn out, you're tired, giving all your shit to get past those guys. And then <laughs> you gotta go finish uh, with a seven footer in, in front of you. So it, they're, they're really good defensively. I think Kyle Anders Anderson has been a, a good defender for them. Yep. Alexander, Anthony Edwards is playing all NBA first team defense uh, this season. Um, Cat's been defending. Mike Conley is is scrappy and you know good defender. Like they they have really good yeah. defenders on that Imagine team. Imagine what they're gonna do when Gobert get back. It's gonna be up. Yeah. So like yeah, they're they're a tough cover. They're a tough cover offensively. Because you can't play small. Cat will post up a four. And they, they'll they kill you on the boards. And if you play big, Cat's going to dominate. Like, Cat is a really, like, if Cat's your X factor, then you're in trouble. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because he's 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 a, a five and a four with a four skill set. Like, you can't put a five on yeah. him. He was he was killing. He's, he, he, he's, he's killing. Dude, he's killing. And and I you know I've been texting him throughout this playoff run. Just you know keep killing, keep dominating. Like just 
he he's in a different place right now. I, I think he's, which is crazy because I thought he was done for the year. Yeah, that's a yeah. That, that is crazy. <laughs> that is crazy. Well, yeah, that's we were cr- all thinking, yeah, yeah, it's over. Shout out the doctors, man. Shout out whatever, whoever whoever <laughs> yeah. is touching that knee in Minnesota, man. Shout out to that person touching that knee in Minnesota. Um, I, I know we've talked about Drew being the best individual uh, defensive player that you've matched up with, but as far as team defense, who would you say is the most difficult team that you've played against when it comes to the defensive side of the ball? You look at the Orlando Magic, the Dwight Howard era of that Orlando Magic team. That was a, a tough defense, defensive team. The Chicago Bulls, the Tom Thibodeau era. With Joe Keem, uh, Luol Dang, Keith Bogan. The Bulls? Yeah. Kirk Heinrich. Kirk Heinrich. That Kirk was Kirk. a tough defensive team. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I think I I early on facing like I think playing our my practice team, the Indiana Pacers, the practice Crazy defense. Crazy <laughs> defense was played, bro. Crazy defense was played. So I think I was kinda like used to good defense uh-huh. in my career playing in Indiana. Yeah, no, I think that's fair. That is an interesting thought. Like, you've always been on a, like, some guys don't have that. Yeah, you know what I mean? like, yeah. Especially now, like, imagine. Like, those practices was tough. Like, those those practices, it was, it was you had to really get your shit off. To, <laughs> <laughs> uh, with Rudy, though, there's been a lot of controversy around him missing uh, that game, too, with the birth of his ah. first child. Yeah, uh, which congratulations, Rudy. That's that's awesome. That's awesome. Congratulations. That's it's, awesome. it's definitely sparked some questions. I saw Gilbert's quote was like the funniest. Like the baby's gonna be there when you come back. You come like, back. Why would you? You know. <laughs> and again, I, I'm just curious on <laughs> where you stand on that. I think he made the right decision. Yeah. You know, totally. that's you know, it's it's the the birth of your first, not 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 like not the birth of your kid, but your firstborn. Yeah. Like, I think he made the right decision. Oh, that was so his if it was his born? second? That was his first born. If it was his oh, second, okay. would it be different? I think I'm still making the, the decision of being by my wife, being there for my baby, <laughs> um, the like kid. the deliverer, like, <laughs> you know, because anything could go wrong. You could be, uh, uh, I've been, you know, I've been a part of a tough pregnancy with my wife and going through that and... I could only imagine, you know, my wife being there alone and having to deliver a baby alone. Um, and so, like, yeah, I, I, I couldn't imagine leaving her by herself. So, you know, if it was a home game, I'm at the delivery and then I'm, I'm at the game. Yeah. But then being on the road, I'm, I gotta, I gotta, you know, I, I gotta be the, the man and husband in that. I only, I only take it because it's his first. If it wasn't his first. Yeah. You at the game? Yeah, that's <laughs> my dude. It, as much money that man got, he got aunties, mamas, cousins, all family members, daddies, grandparents, everybody at that goddamn hospital yeah. going to watch and record and send you the first footage while your daddy out there winning. At the end of the day, if it, it, it no. Yeah. You're safe. Yeah. It's your first. I mean, but I'm I'm be there. But at that point, I'm sure like I would hope Daniela would give me the blessings like, like honey. This what is you going to say? This you didn't run there. You see my second, ass on TV while I was delivering. This is, like, this, on, this is our second child. Like, go go ahead. Yeah. You know, I I would guess that would be her response. Yeah. My brother-in-law just had his, my sister just, they just had their fourth child. Congratulations. Shout out Major Congratulations. Francis. Four-time uncle here. Fun, fun note that I do have uh, agent rights to all four of, of the kids. Uh, so that's going to be exciting. I'll talk to Aaron about that later. But I gave Ian a lot of because he missed the church league championship. I'm yeah. like, dude, you're setting a horrible <laughs> example for that for that kid. You need to be at that game. But it, it, it was fun. It was fun. Oh, so this this yeah, that subject is a little personal for you. Huh? Yeah, but it, one one last thought, P. Like so you've had a kid, <laughs> you you <laughs> you have children, and you yeah. know what that experience is like. Me, I've never had any children, and when I'm looking at the Minnesota Timberwolves team. They look like they have some some older guys, some younger guys. There's probably some guys on that team that have had kids. And then there's probably some young guys that mm-hmm. they, they're not even thinking about kids. I wonder how the team took it. Like, was there different opinions within the locker room because of where they're at in life? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Maybe you, I, I think that would be an interesting, were they all just like, yeah, man, go have the kid. We understand. Or were some of the guys mm-hmm. like... Bro, no, you I, think, I think that has a lot to do with how strong that locker room is. 
You know what I mean? Because if the locker room isn't strong and someone decides to not be there with the team, then now that locker room is pulled direction. Some people are with Rudy. Mm -hmm. Some people are against Rudy now. But when a locker room is strong, everybody's like, all right, one of our brothers is down. Yeah. Like, let's go. Two brothers. They coach too. He not on. Uh, he down. He, he down. On. They still balling. He the coach game. down. Rudy down. Everybody <laughs> down. He's just, he's everybody just, down. He man. just messed up the whole answer, didn't he? <laughs> he I did. did. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> Too bad. Too bad. <laughs> nah, when when like you know it, the response or or like you cover your boys back, like you know Rudy ain't with us. Like let's go get this for Rudy and his newborn. Like that's how a locker room yeah. rallies together. That's when the, everybody's on the same page. Yeah. Um, so I, I do give, like, shout out to Timberwolves, you know, in, in that locker room for understanding, like, we got to go get this for Rudy. Yeah. Like, he made the right decision. Go be with his family. Let's go win this game for him. Yeah. Shout if, out to Rudy, man. Yeah. Shout out to Rudy. Yeah, shout out to Rudy. If, if they can get through the Draymond Green situation, this is, this is life. <laughs> They'll be just fine. So they're going to be good. I guess we're going to keep talking about this boy, Anthony Edwards, because he's doing so damn good. I want to just stay talking about him because he's been balling in these damn playoffs. And I ain't the only one going to keep talking about him because everybody else talking about him. You dig? They over there comparing this boy to Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. That ain't somebody you just compare somebody to. Your hairness. You know what I'm saying? He over there telling the media now, he don't want, he telling everybody, stop all that. I'm not Michael Jordan. You can't compare me to him. He's the greatest of all time. Now, P, I got to ask you because you play in this league. You know what I'm saying? How do you, you feel when you're getting compared to somebody before the time? And come on, we talking about Michael Jordan. This boy is getting compared yeah. to. Like, how, how you feel and what do you do, man? I do think, obviously, you take it with a grain of salt. I think there are similarities. Their athleticism, their body types, obviously playing a two guard position. Yep. The charisma, the personality, the confidence. Um, there is similarities. I think when in his <coughs> when he's looking at it, I think it's more so like you you can't compare me to the greatest of all time, like you know, I, I think he's more so like, you know, I, I haven't I'm just done started. enough yeah. to be <laughs> in that conversation, but you can see the similarities yeah. based off their game, their yeah. game, uh, their their play style, their their game style. Um, there, I think there are a lot of similarities. Yeah. I think so. The, I think he looked his his look movement, sure. yeah. his look. Well, yeah. the, the more and more he plays like this, the more and more those allegations the, are starting to look yeah. true. When you see MJ that, MJ had another kid, half. man. MJ, that, <laughs> that's, that's hey. And I'm like him. I agree with what he's saying. Like, of course, we know he doesn't even have close to the accolades mm -hmm. of Michael Jordan. But you know, he's like, of course, it's like when you get compared to somebody like that, it's like so much. Like, damn, I gotta really. Mm -hmm. Ball out because I want to stay mm -hmm. getting compared to this. Dude yeah, at the but end it, it could be a, it could be a motivation like a big one. Uh, uh, because now you're it's an expectation. You know what I mean? Right. Like people see you in this microscope, and you have to live up to now this expectation right. of the next Michael Jordan. Yeah. And right. so I, I think it helps. Like in his case, he's confident, mm -hmm. and he has the personality to take on that persona. Yeah. Um. So I, I I mean I like it I, I like it he I and I've been saying it I, I've like I've been I I called it like yeah. he would be the face of the league yeah I, I'm trying yeah. to like I, I what other players P usually like the face of the league you think LeBron James mm -hmm. you think Wimby they come in and they're they're going crazy in the first first season that they're in the NBA like you just know yeah like yeah. I don't think we necessarily had that vision with. Anthony Edwards when when he first got into the league what other players in the past have kind of made that big of a leap you get what I'm saying mm -hmm. like so he, he was not no one thought Anthony Edwards was going to be the face of the league year one it's or like he they didn't forcing have him that, to you know be what the I mean it's like yeah. too right he's now. just continued <laughs> to climb and it's it's like well I mean he's a like a, he he was a top five pick I understand but you get what I'm saying like he was number most, one right yeah, Most yeah, guys, yeah. He he was a number one pick, so but like, he didn't have the hype of LeBron or Wendy. <clears throat> I don't know. I just feel like, and, and his first few years, I think just based on his play, it wasn't like he was. was I think it's more of a respect thing though with him about him mentioning Michael like that. I don't think it's the expectations for him. I don't think those bother him at all. I think he's just being respectful too, of course, to Michael MJ. and 
and and so forth. That boy just want to win. But P, I want to speaking of what's the who the wildest co- compares you got to somebody? I mean, the only comparison is is T Mac. T Mac. Yeah, only comparison is T Mac. I get I, I've gotten that since I was in high school. Yeah. You know, that was my T-Mac. NBA comparison. T Mac and Usher. I've been seeing him, please. <laughs> <laughs> they mad at you right now, Usher. Why? You uh, canceled your show, Lovers and Friends and oh, shit. Oh, well, they, I heard it was they, a bad, like, they want tornado or some back, shit. Usher. I heard the <laughs> they weather. They refund back. They it was a, it's not his hotel. fault. It was Enlighten some, me. Uh, I have no clue what you're talking about. No lightning so or nothing. Canceled, happened he either. canceled his Lovers and Friends in Vegas. But I think it was because of the weather. Yeah. And I don't even think it wasn't his fault. Nothing even happened either. I think. Nope. I mean, you got to like, you got to take account for that, though. Yeah, now nah, of course, I'm just playing because he said Usher. They mad at you, Usher. Don't be <laughs> ugly. Let's move on to the to the east east, uh, east side of the NBA, and Uh-oh. we got to talk about Jalen Brunson. He's uh, been playing again. He's been playing so good out in New York. Scored 43 points in Game One, which was his fourth straight 40 plus game. And there's not a lot of players that have done that. You know, I know playing in New York is different. But you got the opportunity to play against Jalen when he was on the Western side with the Dallas Mavericks. Did you ever expect uh, this type of leap when he went over to New York for him to be playing like this? Nah, not like this. <laughs> I, not, I ain't going to even lie. I thought he was really good. And I, you see the flashes of what he's doing now. You saw those flashes and those plays when he was in Dallas. But obviously, small sample size when you're playing alongside Luka in um, – you know, so you don't see that. But you, I mean, when Luka went out and uh, and Jalen Brunson became the starter in, in that stretch where Luka was hurt, he showed that he could handle and, and, you know, run a team and be the face of a team. Um, so you saw the signs, but like, I didn't think this good, especially like what he's doing in probably the biggest market that you could do it in, the toughest probably franchise that you could play for with the expectations, the pressure in, in New York, he's delivering. Like, he's, he's been tough. He's been, been extremely tough. You know, I, I think he just figured it out. Like, you know, especially with no Julius, too. Yeah, see, that's that what makes it even that's kind a, of more yeah. surprising. More it's surprising, like, yeah. He haven't played since shit. Like, he picked up even like more of the play. flag. Oh, yeah. Shit. Huh? He, he ain't played since regular season, huh? Yeah. Damn. Yeah. And and their whole no, team no, he, has been playing well. Probably haven't played for like the past two, three month months. and a half, two months. I think Julia's been out. Yeah. Been but, you man. know, I, I think with for Jalen, like he has some, you know, it, it says a lot about when a player is just comfortable. Yeah. Right? My dad's an assistant coach. My two best friends played yeah. with me. Yep. And like, it says a lot, too, about you have your system, your support group around you. You know, it allows you to be you, and and there's comfort there. Those fans are going crazy. They're going crazy. They're you watch the end of that that, they're, they're that Pacers Knicks game. Like I feel like you could hear the crowd at the like you could yeah. you could feel what that's like. Those are fun to watch. Yeah, it's a fun series to watch. And that like if you've been at MSG during a game, that place can get loud as fuck. That shit can get loud in there because it's small. Like it's like everybody's on top of you. Like it, that place can get loud as hell. Have you have you been to the garden and watched the game? Yeah. Yeah. I'm so, somebody. Yeah, shout man. out, shout out Jalen Brunson, man. You know that. You said Come what? On. You what? He said, I'm somebody. I'm somebody. You know that. <laughs> you know that. But speaking of best friends, his friend Josh got their heart over there going crazy. That boy played what? 48 minutes 48 the first man, game? That's that Tom Thibodeau. He played that 48 <laughs> minutes. He was, he, was, he was playing offense, defense, on the bench coaching. He was doing every damn thing. Like that was like literally, yeah. ja, ja, he on a, he he's on a probably, different. He's probably done that for a couple games this playoffs where he's played high minutes. What what I love the most though, how he remember when he was in the G League. Uh-huh. Now he's balling for the New York Knicks. Do you know how hard it is to make a name for yourself over there? Yeah, <laughs> I mean this this like L A. You got to make a name for yourself. So yeah. I want to ask you, P, how difficult is it to find? your role play in the NBA on a team like the Knicks. Yeah, I think it's extremely hard. It's extremely tough to like find a home in the NBA if you're not one of those 
I know that was crazy. I know that was crazy. I didn't want to mess you uh, up. So I tried. <laughs> I tried. Um, that's why I switched it up. <laughs> he said it's extremely uh, but hard. But it, it, is, it is extremely tough to find a home because you got to look at, like, there's always fresh talent coming into the league yep. every year. And, you know, to find a home, it, it takes the right, you know, group. It takes the right coaching staff. It takes the right front office to believe in you. It takes the right environment to play in, the right, uh, you know, coaching style, you know. Um, so it, it's, it's extremely tough. But, you know, I think for the guys that do find their niche, they always, you know, show out. He because, I mean, out. It, like, I, I feel like there's a lot of NBA players that from the naked eye, you'd be like, man, this dude sucks. Right, right. right. Like I could I could play, I could take his job. Like I can beat him one on one. Like the average fan might think that. But a lot of it is really like, you know, that player just might be in a bad system that doesn't highlight what he's good right, at. Right. Or he can't showcase or he can't play the play the, the way he wants to play. And, you know, it, it that is one of the toughest things. Do you think uh with with uh Josh he gets to show his talent more because Julius is gone right now? Is that one of his opportunities? I think so. I mean, when you watch him in, when you watch, go way back to when he was at Villanova, you watched him at Villanova. He was a hard working, gritty, defensive player. He was a star in that, in that role of, you know, you know, he played with Mikael Bridges. Mikael Bridges was, you mm -hmm. know, they just had a lot of glue guys that all did an amazing job playing a role. And now he's back playing that Good role boy. of the dirty work you know, doing whatever it takes to win, rebounding, defense, knocking down open shots. Um, he's doing literally everything it is it, it is to make the job easy for Jalen Brunson. So, yeah, he, he's definitely found his role, and that goes along with the comfort thing, right? Yep, yep, like, yep. All right, I can, I can lower my shoulders a little bit. I'm here with my boys. Like, they know how I play. Yeah. They can vouch for me. Like, <laughs> right, let me just go hoop. So I, I think there is a lot of like just comfort in that, and, and shout out Divincenzo as well. Been, I was gonna he's been him. killing. They all he, he's game, bro. He's each a perfect game, dude. He for looks more and more too. comfortable. He he perfect right now for yeah. Him too. That team oh. is tough. So the Cavs and the Celtics are on the other side in the East, and Game One, Boston beat the shit out of them, <laughs> one by twenty five. <laughs> How y'all feel about where the Celtics at as being the team to beat in the East? Um, they always there. They the only team over there in the East. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That, so like they they the last Mohicans. They the always, last Mohicans huh? always. And <laughs> it's just it's gonna be like that for a while till they fix the East up. Cause the East is doo doo right now to me. I'm just being <laughs> honest. The East is doo doo as hell. You yeah. can't I mean you got you got Nah, they do. Yeah, they, they, but no, I'm no, starting no, no. to see the you East got, more. New York. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm starting to see they got more. Some young but teams. During during the season, it didn't look good. It didn't yeah, look good. Okay. Now looking at the East, of course you like, damn, they balling, but Boston's always there. You know, I always can say I just wish them nothing but the best. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can That's say. That's surprising. For that, that, <laughs> them, them, win, <laughs> them winning by 25 game one, that surprising, right? Because there's two sides of it, right. right? Team that has that much time off, there might be some rust. There might yep. be, you know, you know, they, they, they just might, it might take them a game to get back on schedule. Whereas the Cavs, they just came out of a series. Yep. Tough series. Tough, tough series. Tough. So, like, you know, that might be carryover of to, like, all right, we're, we're, we're in our flow. Like, we're in our, you know, we, we're rocking. Um, but then the alternative to that is they might just be exhausted. You know that what I mean? It's, it's, it's mentally draining coming out of a long, hard game, fought series. Game seven, right? Yeah. 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 That series was wildly the, inconsistent, though. A lot of blown leads. It was yeah. like, it was. So how long did Boston wait? They were off for about a week. They Ooh. lost one game. Damn. To the Heat. To the Heat. Yep. So that went, that went five games. Five games. Yeah, they were done. They were, and then they went seven games. So they were done for about a week. Wow. So yeah, they, yeah, Cleveland's tired. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. You think about a team that had a week, a week off. chilling and you got to come you just in. played yep. yesterday. Seven game series. The day yeah. before yesterday. Yeah, he, they tired. And then you fly into a new city. Yep, at they that. tired. They tired. So they had I, no yeah, rest. that game one, they just had to be exhausted. Yeah. It's tough to look at the East. Jackie already touched on it, but I wonder if we'll be around long enough to ever see like the East become, you know, more established. Cause it kind of like 
when you think of the East, you're really just worried. About, you're not thinking. Why about do you think that is? Else. Do you think because of climate? I'm sure. I'm sure that has something to do with it. Um, not all of it, but I'm play sure, style. I don't think play style has. I, I would. It's got to be because of the climate in in better cities, right? Like people will go to L.A., Phoenix. Yeah, Miami. Dallas. Miami, Miami well, made that's it. East. Dallas. But I'm just saying, like. That's one team Dallas. that did decent. But if like Jimmy people, Butler wasn't hurt, who knows? What but it's been like that for years, where yeah. the West has just been West been more, more dominant, dominant, man. When yeah. was the East dominant? Uh, Shit, Michael Jordan. Just time. the Boston when the Celtics were going <laughs> Michael crazy. Jordan. Michael Jordan. Le- Shit. Well, LeBron. Did LeBron. Michael yeah, Jordan. LeBron. That's that's just one team. Like the East as a whole. Well, that's when well Jordan era they had. Of course, the New York was balling. That made sense. Uh, the Detroit nah, we, was balling. He was the number one team when I was. Like, yeah, we, P we was, was in the East. OKC when he was what, balling. What did y'all do? We'll play. We lost to the team that won the championship. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, but just collectively as a group, it just seems like the West is always better than the East. Yeah, because you you think of the stars, right? Like you even look at the All Star games. Like the stars were heavily dominated with with the West of late. I feel like back in the day, the East yeah. had a lot. It was a lot more parity. But I think like of recent, the West has kind of been overpowering the East. Everyone's got a thirst, a drive to be the next big thing, to put the world on notice, and for me to be one of the best basketball players on the court every night. So if you answer when your thirst calls, Sprite's for you. Well, you know it's for me then. (laughs) (laughs) Look, my drive has got me to where I am today as an actor, and Sprite is for the makers and creators like myself, the visionaries that put in the work to build their dreams. Whether you're shooting a cinematic masterpiece on your phone or filling notebooks with your schedules or up all night turning your bedroom into the booth. You know what? Keep going, because thirst is everything. Having equity and being a managing partner in my own mortgage company at the age of 35 has quenched my thirst to be as successful as I wanted. But even that hasn't stopped my drive towards greatness. Sprite is made for those who thirst for success and are working to make their dreams a reality. So keep going and remember to be true to yourself. Obey your thirst. Sprite. Before we get back to the show, Podcast P is sponsored by BetterHelp. We all carry around different stressors, big and small. When we keep them bottled up, it can start to affect us negatively. And therapy is a safe space to get things off your chest and to figure out how to work through whatever's weighing you down. How has therapy helped you guys when you need to get things off your chest? I think having a support group around me kind of helps with uh, being able to open up and, you know, relate with what's going on in the world and what's going on mentally to kind of keep me at a pretty even kill uh, attitude. So that helps for me. Well, I look at it like you basically got somebody to talk to that really want to sit there and listen to your problems and that can really help you out. Ain't nothing better than that. So, you know, it's always good to have somebody listen to you, you know, because they can help you get over what you need to. Love that. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Get it off your chest with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Podcast P today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Podcast P. All right, y'all. We got one of my favorite segments back again. It is Rated PG, and y'all already know we got a new sponsor in town. And Rated PG is sponsored by Prime Video, your all-in-one destination for live sports, hit movies, TV, and plenty more. So find your happy place right there. This is how Rated PG works, y'all, where Paul George takes, uh, what can I say, the under the radar play around the NBA and he raced their skills and breaks down why we all should be watching this player. You know what I'm saying? Give a little insight on what they do. So, you know, P, I'm going to go ahead and ask you what player in the second round has impressed you the most in this series, man? Uh, I'm going to shine the light and I just talked about him on Dante DiVincenzo. Um, I'm going to shine the light on him. I think he's been great. He's showing that he can be more than just a complimentary player. He's showing that he could be a reliable player on the court. You think about the guys that he's played alongside with on that Milwaukee team, on that Golden State team. I think that kind of carried over to him expanding his game and now getting a taste of success. You know, one of the best things I think people, you realize in the NBA, when you start to taste what that success is like, right? it's, it's like a craving that like, 
like, oh, I want that feeling again. Like, I know what that feeling is. I know what I'm capable of. And then now it's just like, I need that. <laughs> like, and I think that's what we're finding with DiVincenzo is like, all right, he knows that he can score with the best. He knows yep. he can lock up. He knows that he could, you know, he balling. dominate now on the floor. <laughs> like, like, I, like, all right, I'm, I know what I'm capable like, I'm of in the league you, y'all now. Give me the opportunity. Yeah, I'm gonna show now I got you. the opportunity. Yep. Uh, Tom Thibodeau, Coach Tibbs is going to play me 40 minutes. Like, <laughs> cool. I'm out here. Yeah, I, better, I'm out better, here. I better do something. I can hoop now. You know what I mean? So I, I, I want to shed light on him. I thought he was great. He's another one of those players like Josh Hart that just does whatever it takes. I thought we saw a glimpse of him doing dirty work. We saw glimpses of him being, you know, uh, uh, catch and shoot. We saw glimpses of him uh, taking on, you know, uh, uh, isolation plays and, and finishing at the basket. Um, I just saw a complete repertoire of, of, of uh, a player that putting it all together now. So he's had his fair share of, of moving around in the league. I think yeah. he's found his home. And uh, I think I think New York Knicks is going to have a, a really good deep run. They got to keep him and, and Brunson together. Yeah, they better keep them together <laughs> they right now. Like, they homies. They homies. How can Brunson get any better? He got like, all hey, his homeboys got on his squad. Homeboy. Good in New York. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, and, we got a chance and, to and make New York take them. care of theirs. Yeah. So oh, yeah. I'm sure they moving around like bosses in New York right now. They, they been, And it's crazy. They don't even got their Eating for free. Right I'm now, sure they eating for free. Randall. Don't even got him. They don't even got yeah. Jay Randall. They, they got there's there's something going on over there in New York right now that I could shout see out them. that culture like Isaiah Hardestein who left us. He I was a big advocate of him. Shout out OG Ananubi. Great trade and pickup. I was I didn't quite get it at first. I didn't I didn't know if that would work there, but because you lose RJ Barrett, you lose quickly, and then you you get OG Ananubi, mm -hmm. um, and he's fit perfectly with that group. So. Shout out OG as well there. That's a, that's a really good Knicks team. Shout out to the Knicks, man. I like Shout that. out to the Knicks. I think they got a chance. I they think they got a they chance day. to compete. Yeah, they got, for sure. They, they kind of have that special run. story. They have, yeah. it just seems like you think they can be March Boston? Madness, big, like, I feel like they're going to make a run. They yeah. have they something Boston? about it. looks like they will. It's, it's going to be a good series. I don't know, but I think I think they're going to make Boston a run for the money. Be a good series. That's going to be a good one. That's old school. That's old school right there. Jackie's ready for the next segment, so let's, let's get this? to it. Oh, it's, what's oh he oh. is hyped for this. Oh, that's your time. All right, we, 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 you hyped for this. Yeah, no, we, I, we I on your last one. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, go ahead. Not like us. Not like us. They not like us. <sighs> so we, we gotta talk about this, because this debate has been wildly going on across all social medias, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's two hip-hop heavyweights, two goats in the hip-hop uh field we got Kendrick Lamar versus Drake right who is winning this battle this rap beef battle right here first of all there will be no Drake slander on this podcast and there should be uh we're all Drake fans as well ah. Jackie I want your answer first Jackie gives his answer first what you think first. monkey what you think who won? Uh, listen all I'm gonna say is Rap is fun right now. So all I can say is fun. They both doing their thing. <laughs> but, you know, we don't know, first of all, if any of this is real or fake. We don't know if what they talking about is true at all. Yeah. Nobody knows nothing. At the end of the day, it's fun. But So it's strictly music. Like, strictly, right, strictly. Who's making the better music? I, 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 they both making great music. I ain't going to lie. Yeah. They both lyrically doing their thing. They both saying special things to make you think that even if it's true or not, they yeah. both saying things. But for a battle, if I'm looking for something this year that I don't seen, I've never seen a battle go this long with different songs and songs. But out of all of this to say, Drake's, I like when he, you got, he got some head bobs. Yeah. Kendrick got some head bobs. The only thing out of all the verses out of Drake's, the only one I didn't like, and I'm going to be honest, is the AI one. When he did yeah. Snoop Dogg, Snoop and that's Tupac. the only one out of all of them I didn't like because nobody was... from the West Coast would ever disrespect Kendrick Lamar, even though we know it was AI, it was Drake, it was right. fake, blah, blah, blah. Right. But ain't like ain't, ain't, uh, like us. They, they, they not like just, us. They not like us is just something that out of all of the, the raps, it's something that you can really dance to. I thought Kendrick to. definitely made a summer anthem with that one. Especially he definitely did, on no doubt. Yeah, for sure. I thought Kendrick made a, a, a L.A. anthem 
Like that's gonna be rained on. They quit hella, walking to that. That shit's gonna they be played. Walk, they quit walking. Yeah, it's all tough of for me, time. bro. I like. I want to like, but then it's like, no, I can't. A, I gotta be and, loyal. And I'm a. I'm a fan of both. I'm both. a fan of both. Big fan of both. I love Ke- Drake music. I love Kendrick's music. So it's hard to like really like be like oh, uh, but I'm. I hope at they the end keep of the day going. On West Coast. Yeah. I hope they keep going. Don't back down. Nobody's backing down. But J. I Cole. love the artistry of like how quick they are responding to each other though. Yep. I think that itself you see the talent of like what real hip hop artists is like. And it's quality music. It's not like some bullshit that they're going back and forth playing. Like it's- Like they really, really producing the songs. They really producing like, songs. Like like they really like, like the Family Matters. I think what matters, Drake did, yeah. Drake did three different, he did different beats in that song, which was amazing. I'm glad to hear this, because earlier in the show, it felt like you weren't going to say anything good about Drake. No, so I'm rolling yeah, with I, what I, you're I, saying I, right I, now. This is everything good. Everything they said literally was amazing. But with Drake's, you like, damn, this is this is dope. But you you just doing this. Not to say Kendrick had one that's just right. you can do but, this. But but he but, more but, like fall asleep. Yeah, but Drake could very was. easily Drake could very easily put like Drake is 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 known for like club bangers and shit. Drake yeah. could very easily throw a club yeah. banger. Easy, there. easy. This is, this is all I'm gonna say about the situation. I think we live in a culture mm-hmm. where when you're at the top of your game, sadly. People like to see the downfall of whoever's at the top. And I think it's cool right now to, to, to kind of see Drake's downfall. Like, it's cool to hop on that bandwagon. And there was a quote, and it was something, I'm probably going to butcher the quote now, but it was, you either die a hero or you live long enough to be a villain. villain and i think that's what drake's experiencing right now i think there's a lot of envy and jealousy and now it's like now everyone's you know getting on this bandwagon <laughs> i of hate like, the way that you we, i hate the way that, you that, that that's how i view it but i, I do i i disagree I, I do have to disagree with that hmm. i think initially i don't think it was it was i don't think that was kendrick's approach is to throw rocks at drake the person. I think it was just to uplift the rap game. It was to challenge the position of number one. Like, you know, he obviously stated him, Kendrick, uh, and J. Cole were the big three, meaning Drake stated this. And I think, you know, Kendrick being a competitor was like, all right, well, let's, the rap game is dead. Like, let's, you know, let's challenge each other. Like, let's, Let's like let me let me let me challenge that. I don't want to be friendly in this competition. Like, they on the phone with each other. Yeah, every day. so let me go team up with some other rappers <laughs> and just start throwing shade at you. I I I mean Drake did teamed up with another rapper. Yeah, he also invited him to be on that song. The sh- first person that shooter. Don't, that mm-hmm. don't mean nothing. He could have been on there. You did some Twitter digging, huh? Oh, I know everything. <laughs> I did some Twitter this. digging. Drake, I'm with you, brother. Okay, <laughs> we all with everybody, man. It's fun. I wish none of them brothers nothing but the best. Keep making great hip hop music. Keep doing it. Right now, they say uh, uh, Kendrick is at what a million dollar yeah. downloads or something. So obviously, it's doing some for his kids, and everybody's gonna do the same for Drake. So keep on downloading the boys, support them, and do your thing. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But have, have, we what do the people the people know you're in a Drake song, right? Did we discuss that before? I don't know, but you can discuss it. Again, it's always good. Yeah, Jack, <laughs> Jackie's yeah. in a Drake yeah. song. Yeah. A Drake I, found, song. I find out so many interesting things about this guy over here to my right, but shout out to I Jackie Long. Somebody. Like, he's somebody. He, he, somebody. He, he really, you man, know, I was the first he one. He Drake know. before Drake was Drake. That's what I'm saying. Shout out to my boy Drake. I'm just saying. But anyway, we going to move to these, these something I got to say, because they, they might need a little uplifting too, because you said uplifted. Yeah. You know what I'm about to ask you, because I got to be nosy, P. <laughs> yeah. I got to be no, because you unemployed right now. <laughs> You is jobless. You is not hired. You is unemployed, motherfucker. Okay? You ain't got a pot to piss in right now. But what I'm saying is, to get to all this out the way, I want to know, because I'm nosy. If Team USA president called you Gret Hill for a replacement job, because you know they got a roster coming up this uh, summer, for the uh, what's it was the Paris the Paris Olympics? Yeah. Come on, P. If you get the call, I want to know right now, because I'm nosy, big dog. Are you going to go play this summer? You unemployed. Um, <laughs> no, nah, I think I'm not. I think I'm not. I think, uh, you know, uh, initially, of course, I wanted to be on the team. Um, but, you know, after, like, you know, after not being selected, I, it's kind of moved on to 
you know, what's best for me in this situation. I've kind of moved on into that thought process. Um, and so like, yeah, I'm not even that I, I crossed that off of my summer, you know, list already. Um, and so not, not from a petty, not from a, you didn't pick me. It was kind of just a, you know, you got to prepare for that. You know, you prepare with your family, you prepare with your, with my wife. I prepared like a lot of stuff right, in right. the summer of like what we'll do. Mm-hmm. So like now at this point it's like, all right, well. Then we couldn't even play Call of Duty and shit with you. <sighs> yeah, you yeah, know? well y'all have to be up at like, you know, yeah. four or five in the morning. Couldn't even do that. While I'm in Paris. Well, I don't even need to ask you my next, my next question there. I was going to just ask you about what Steve, you know, when Steve Curry even asked you about. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. He asked me. And, you already and, gave us the answer. Yeah, I, I mean, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know if that, you know, conversation could have went out. But it wasn't nothing crazy. It was just, you know, he asked if I had any interest of playing. And, you know, I told him, yeah, like, if the opportunity presented itself, absolutely. Um, but, you know, like I said, now, hindsight or, or moving, you know, f- forward from it is... I, I kind of, you know, checked that off the list to do this summer, so. Are you one of them people, P, like you already checked it off your list? Mm-hmm. Now, when it happens and they go out there ball, are you one of them people be like, God, damn. <laughs> should have been, been out I should have been out there, man. There. Are you no, like, I mean, uh, you, it's cool. They, I get, you, you know, know? For, like, I think for sure anybody have FOMO and, and you know, watching them and, and, you know, especially me have been a part of Team USA and won a gold in Rio, like, I would have FOMO knowing what we did and the fun we had and the camaraderie we built and the brotherhood that was lasted through that, that has lasted through that. There'd definitely be some FOMO, but like at the end of the day. Because yeah, they get that goal, you'd be like, oh. I would be enjoying watching them from the comfort of wherever I'm at. With in the them world. ugly feet up on the, the Yable, ugly like feet yeah. up on the Yable, just like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> let's go, USA. <laughs> you think they're going to do it with the squad they got so far? Absolutely. You got the top dogs. You got the best of the best think so teaming too. up together. Um, I think the core group of it all is is enough and elite. You know, I don't know who's going to be the replacements, but. I seen. The other day, how many people that's in the playoffs right now on the USA team? I think it was only like five that's left. Five left, right? Okay, mm. that's good. That's yeah. good. That's good. Or maybe less. Because you got Anthony Brunson, Edwards. Anthony well, Edwards. at that time, it was like five or yeah, six. Probably, yeah, but probably now less it's now. less now because Joel is out. Exactly. Oh, that's yep. less. Yep, yep. Yeah. 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 What, what what when it comes down to the have they been looking for a replacement right now? Is that like a known thing right now or no? I just I think I don't think. It's quite finalized. Finalized that like people that will drop out, but I think there will be some like some people that will that will. It's gonna be drop fun watching out. them. That that's awesome. Yeah. Watching all those guys go play for go our play. country yeah. and and it's just I mean you think of the landscape of where the, the where basketball is now. Like a lot of countries are really good yeah. at basketball now. It's an like, important year. Yeah, for us. Yeah. It is. Well. That's a wrap on podcast, P. P, tell them where they need to subscribe and follow us. And Dallas, you can join in and do the same thing. And we'll see y'all next time on podcast. Break it Come down, P. Come on. Follow us and subscribe on all of our socials. You can go hit that subscribe button on YouTube right now. Not right now, but right, right now. now. <laughs> okay. What you got to say, D? He covered it, man. Just go like, subscribe, give us a follow, and we appreciate you guys watching. He see y'all in the comments. Go like, see y'all and subscribe. soon. Podcast, P. <laughs> Ain't like like us. Ain't they not, not like, like us. us.